Hi there, my name is Dr. Katie Saint and this video is an intro video to a series of parent stories. We actually have three parents who were willing to share their stories on what their journey was like. And I think this is so valuable because so often we feel like we're alone and we feel like nobody can relate to our story or nobody would understand. And we feel like we're going through things alone. And so often that isn't the case. So I think it's so valuable to hear each other's stories and to learn from each other. So I think it took a lot of courage for these three families to share their stories. So I wanna give them a special thank you. And I hope that you all enjoy these stories as much as I did. I think they have value for all of us. All right, thanks so much, please enjoy. My name's Thomas. Um, I am the father to a awesome, just brilliant seven-year-old uh, son, boy. And um, uh, he's going on eight uh, this year, and uh, he just so happens to be on the spectrum. Uh, he's an incredibly intelligent, intelligent young little dude. Um, um, as far as, I guess, uh, tell me a little bit about your family. So I... Um, I'm a single father. I have him uh, full time, and um, it is a little overwhelming. Um, I, I it, but I, I really feel um, like I, I have always have his best interest in mind, and um, it's very rewarding. Um, I'm originally from Arizona, and uh, he was born in Arizona. Uh, but um, I come up. I came up here in 2013, and um, and he was really the only person I knew, and, and he was only a year old. Um, and you know, I had no family. Uh, I have no family. I have no friends. Um, I didn't have a support network when I first came up here, but um, you know, I've I've uh, I've been able to leverage a lot of the um, the resources that Fox Valley Autism has given me, and a lot of the community things within the Fox Valley in general. And um, I've used that to build a, a an excellent uh, support network um, to to fall on um, in case I need it. And um, uh, so yeah, that's that's a little bit uh, there. I, I mean, I have him full time. It's it's good. I, I'm I'm home for all of his therapy, and uh, I was retired from the army um, due to an injury sustained in combat um, back in 2011. And uh, you know, I'm I, I'm privileged enough to be able to be there and see him develop and grow and, and, and really try to exceed um, or excel in providing him and what he needs. Um, I think that's a good enough answer. Yeah. It's going to have to do. Question number two. When did you start ABA therapy? That would have been in, oh gosh. Yeah, so I guess it would have been late 2014, early 2015. I'm pretty sure his senior therapist is like, yes, Thomas, it's it's that. So I'm just going to say that. So it's been about four and a half years then, I guess. Um, and, um, you know, for the first two of those years, there was a, uh, split household uh, dynamic and um, now I've, I've had him full-time and um, yeah so uh, it's it, it initially started the first two years he was getting about oh, over 30 hours 30 plus hours if not 40 of um, uh, services between occupational therapy speech therapy and in-home autism therapy um, and then within the last two years since I've had him full-time there's been consistency um, I think he's I think he's down to 14 um, if, if not less, and it's 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 great. So that's a good enough answer, I think. Uh, question number three: Share about your ex what your experience was like. I'm assuming she's talking about EBA and just therapy in general. Um, you know, I have all the papers. Um, <laughs> So I guess I'll just start, you know, I, I, I was, I was very adamant about it. I, I guess I'll do a little background. So I, I, you know, I, I was in the military, I was in the 101st for, for, uh, five years. I was, uh, 
in Iraq for 15 months during the peak of sectarian violence in uh, one of the more violent um, cities. And I was an infantryman, so I got to do all that. And, um, you know, I I tell you this because, you know, the military is a very structured organization. And um, I, I found that I was very hesitant to at anything that had any any sort of um, resemblance to the structure that I experienced in the military. And I think that that was just from an overwhelming urge to just protect him from my experience from it. So I was really hesitant to to push him to do these things, but I did it knowing, I, I still did it knowing, because, uh, knowing that it would help him succeed. Um, and so, you know, even though I was adamant about it, I, I was still his biggest advocate um, in the way of getting this stuff uh, because, you know, I, I moved up here in, in 13. He was about a year old just to make sure that I could be the father that I, 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 I wanted and he, I knew he needed. And um, he, uh, uh, I, I, had, I had just noticed, you know, he wasn't meeting some of his developmental milestones and and it really just set in stone for me his the absolute need for 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 him to 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 get some extra help. I I, I wasn't sure. Um, I wasn't sure what was what what I was supposed to do. I I I'd never had any sort of experience with it. So when I got hooked up with Fox Valley Autism, um, I just I dove in. I was like, okay, this is what he needs, let's do it. Um, I want to learn as much as I possibly can so that I can help him be as successful as he possibly could. Um, And it was a little difficult um, at first because both parties, um, uh, parents, um, his mother, because it takes two, um, uh, we we had uh, differing ideas as to uh, like uh, the scope of therapy, what the purpose, of therapy was, um, and 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 what what the end result would be or should be, what what we were striving for, and and although it was vague to me, um, at first, uh, just because I didn't understand, um, and I'll get to that later, I I realized that uh, it it could only benefit him more, and um, so I pushed for it, and and you know it was the best thing possible for him. It was it was good. Um, so, uh, after that, you know, you, you can ask any of his therapists, um, they would tell you, you know, I, 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 I felt like a creep doing it, but like I, I would hover over them. I, because I would, I was in there with therapy. I was sitting with them. I was going to game, game nights. I'm, I'm, I still try to go to as many game nights as I can, as many sports groups as I can, because I, I want to see the techniques that they're using so that I can take those with me and and use them um after they're gone and um that's not just saying after therapy's done and away with i'm saying between therapy sessions you know even if it's the next day i i I still want to remain i I still want to give that sense of consistency for him because he absolutely thrives on it and it comes back to uh that thing i was talking about with the military as far as the structure and how i was adamant about it at first you know, kids thrive with structure, and um, and I realize that uh, going through therapy is uh, it, it might be a little bit burdensome at first, but really being able to give a child um, an expectation and then following through with that order of operations, those expectations, um, you know, it, it it helps them it helps them regulate, it helps them understand. Um, yeah, so it just prepares them for life. Um, so that's kind of what my experience was. Um, I never wanted to be a overbearing father. I just, I really just want to see him succeed. And he has been, it has been insane how successful he's been. Uh, my son is cooler than any kid ever. And I'm sure you'll say the same thing about your children and her gender here. But, you know, it, my my son is just my world, and I absolutely love it. How how wonderful of a of a of a boy he's becoming, and how wonderful of a man he he will be. And um, I'm very proud of it. You might hear him in the background; he's playing some Legos. So um, <laughs> um, he's very creative. It's amazing. Um, let's see here. 
I guess we're number four. Um, oh, uh, Lord. Um, what have you learned about autism therapy or parenting that you feel other parents should know or that you wish you would have learned sooner? Oh, well, you know, it's really, I encourage it now. Uh, so the question, I guess, would be, you know, what would you wish, what, what would you wish you would have known before or at the beginning of therapy or sooner? And, um, you know, it's uh, the thing about uh, being a thing about being a parent is, is you know, you want to see your ch child succeed. But the thing about it is you, you can't. Um, you can't always be perfect and even though you want to be you know being a being a good enough parent is, is is exactly what your child needs you to be you need to try to do your best and and that's all they can really ask for you so don't try to be perfect just just be good enough and then some if you can and um you know and and your kids will your kid will love you for it It'll, you'll see him thrive so don't worry about being perfect and don't worry about getting everything right but you know try and and that moves on to the second point i guess is you, you, you of course you can't i didn't know what the heck i was doing I'm, i haven't i'm uh, i'm surprised i've gone through this entire video without cursing actually just kind of think of it anyways uh ask questions of your of your therapist um i i said earlier earlier that i would hover over um his therapist and they, they would tell you the same thing and um i'm i was embarrassed about it because i wanted to protect them but i also wanted to learn what they're doing so i can replicate it and he uh you know it, i i found out later you know they encourage you to ask questions and these line therapists, these uh, the, the senior therapists and, and, and the, the lead staff especially, they, um, they're very knowledgeable in these things. They've been doing this for years. And um, ask them questions. If you have a question why they're doing a certain thing, why they're letting your child cry, whatever it is, ask them. You know, they, they don't, they're not there to just treat your kid and then leave or whatever. They're, they're treating you to... Um, Oh gosh, I gotta change this thing. Sorry about that. Darn thing. Sorry, I'm back. It was just doing something weird. Um, off track. There we go. So they'll want they want you to ask questions. They want you to know why you're doing it. They wanna they want you to understand it as much because these the, the the therapists the lines and the leads and the seniors and all that they want to see your child they want to see my son especially i, I will speak from my experience uh, they want to see them succeed um it's it's a joy for them especially when they meet these reach these milestones and you see this continued gradual growth and you know ask questions don't be afraid to. Don't be embarrassed to. They encourage it, um, and and just do your best. Um, I'm sure you're doing your best, and you know, keep trying. So, yeah, I'll go to the next question because I guess we're four out of six, which is sixty-six percent. Anyways, five. How do you cope with stress you experience? I breathe. Um, <laughs> um, you know, that's the, that's the most basic, basic thing. I, I do it all the time. Um, you know, I, I learned it early on that, um, that breathing is the best way to get your body back into rhythm. Sometimes your heart's just going way too fast and it's just getting into the rhythm of things all over again. And, um, being able to breathe, take a deep breath through your, in through your nose so you get warmer air out through your mouth and in and out. Maybe putting your, your, your hands intertwined on your belly or something like that. Help, you know, feel your diaphragm expand and just focusing on that. Um, that really helps me to um, reorient myself 
on uh, the path that of to get calm again. Um, so, um, you know, I, I guess that's how I handle stress. And I, I, I take a deep breath. And then when I'm able to look at it from a calmer perspective, I typically talk to somebody. Um, you know, the lead therapist, sometimes I, you know, when it comes to um, something with my son, where I have to interact with them about, um, and I have a concern. I always talk to them. I always uh, ask them uh, how <laughs> this darn thing I took a picture. Weird. Weird. Ah, uh, goodness. I always ask them, you know, why is he doing this? Um, what can I do to help him? Uh, what is it that I can do to understand how he's feeling so that I can help him? And um, I guess that's just focused on him. And maybe this question may be oriented more towards myself. But realistically, I, I find that I can deal with stress so much better when I understand what the issue is. And I'm sure there are a lot of other, other people out there that feel the same way. But my greater understanding of an issue... Um, just really helps me put things into perspective and um, getting as much information about a an issue um, and then addressing that um, is uh, is the way that I, I, cope, I cope with stress um, okay last question it's long, gone on long enough um, what are some things six what are some things you really celebrate regarding your child and autism um, you know, he, he's, he's graduated out of um, speech. He's graduated out of occupational. Um, he's, his IEP is going to be up uh, soon. And, 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 you know, though those, those are bittersweet things because I've seen so much progress um, in the few, last few years. The matter or the fact that he's made so much progress because of these services, and, and this is also including all of his autism services, it, it just shows me how it, those those are the bigger things and he didn't get a trophy for these sorts of things but man being it showing from the beginning when he was he had so many ideas just going in his brain you could see those cog wheels turning he was just he just was like oh i want to join legos and dragons and i want to put spiders with dragons and spiders are flying on the dragons and they're breathing fire on the ewoks and like all of this stuff was going on in his head but he wasn't able to articulate that to me, and um, and now um, he just he 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 he'll, he won't it, it it he will just he will just go on and on and on about it, and that's cool. It's cool. It's fantastic. I mean, it, it's so it's a constant thing, but the and it sure it gets excessive at times, but I still celebrate that. That is the easiest thing to celebrate because I really feel um like i've i really feel like i've uh i, I see i see him gaining confidence in, in his own in his own ideas and his speech he's able to put it in writing he's able to draw it on paper he's able to um plan for you know future additions to it um he leaves space for it uh he he, he, he does it in play at the playground. Um, he, he'll build it in Minecraft. It's seeing just these these smaller instances, nothing that I'm, I, I'm ever going to record on a phone or anything like that, nothing that's ever going to go viral. Those are the things that are I, that, I, that I keep to myself that I, I absolutely cherish and the, the things that I celebrate the most is seeing how successful he's been. Yeah. Um, okay, so I guess there is one last question. I lied. Uh, feel free to add it. I guess it's not really a question. Feel free to add any questions, topics you think would be valuable. Uh, I guess two things. Um, well, I don't know how many things, but um, uh, another issue I did find myself at the first with was uh, was having to watch Patrick cry and, and me not being able to go there and soothe him. Um, 
you know, it's hard. I understand that it's hard for not just myself, but to see any, to see your child, to see your little spawn just cry. You want to soothe them. You've been doing it since they were born. And um, especially when it's, it's crocodile tears, you know, sometimes they're really good. They're good actors. I get it. My, my son is a, he's a good actor sometimes, but I've, one of the best things I've learned from his therapist is, is, is learning how to see, learning how to spot those little crocodile tears. And um, even when it's crocodile, even when it's not crocodile tears, when it's just out of pure emotion, um, having, giving them the ability to um, have to self-soothe before I have to intervene well i mean giving them a copious amount of time to figure it out themselves um before um before i interact with them that's that's been probably the best thing for him um, he's been able to, he's better able to understand his own emotions he's better able to to initiate that the, the breathing and, and self-soothing techniques and um yeah don't be afraid to let him cry it it sucks but I've seen the most. I've seen a vast amount of growth in his ability to just be able to understand himself better that way. Um, I, you know, uh, the other thing is is uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, and when you ask questions, don't you know? Just don't be afraid to fo do follow ups. If you if you if you they'll typically give you an answer to it that's that's it, it's going to be a great answer but you know there might be something more to it don't be afraid to ask another one they're they're as much of a reese they understand that they being the therapist they understand that um you as a parent is just as essential uh to be uh are, are just as essential uh to the continued success of your child uh, as they are, uh, they're even more so because you know you, they're not going to be with you for twenty four seven. They're not going to be with your child twenty four seven, but you will, and you'll be able to carry on with those things and 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 asking questions and understanding why, how, um, when to do it. Um, it's just it's just going to breed success, and um, I encourage you to do that. Um, also, I guess you know try. It, it, it's 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 some of the harder things in life that that it, when it harder processes to do in life especially adjusting schedules um, adjusting a, a certain thing you know we are all going through the same thing right now for the va a vast majority of us are with parent being parents we have kids going from a structured school uh, um, schedule to nothing they're playing Fortnite or something um, and uh, doing those transitions, planning for those transitions, uh, learning to help those children set the expectations. Um, that's tough. Um, and it takes some planning and it's a little bit harder, but, um, that will, that will help not just, not just the child that will really help them understand. Uh, it, it, it helped my son understand, I should say, um, what was going on around him, what he could control and what he couldn't control, um, and giving them a bit that ability to control and understand what they can control and not control um, is really great. And it really helps me because, well, it's out there. I know what's going on. It's bam, 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 bam. It's very structured. Um, and it's as some of it's as out of control uh, to me as it is for them. But um, I don't know. Maybe try that. Um, or talk to your therapist about that. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that's it. Um, yeah. If you want to try something fun with your kid, uh, try dad jokes. <laughs> um, have a great summer. Uh, and, yeah, thanks for your time. Hi, my name is Mindy. And my name is Mike. And um, our son is Joshua. 
You he's, can see him in that picture right about there. He's a baby there. Yep, but he's now um, just a few months shy of six years old. And um, we want to talk a little bit. Um, Fox Valley Autism asked us to, to shoot a video and uh, answer a handful of questions um, about our experiences with Joshua. There are other questions. <laughs> um, to uh, talk a little bit about our experiences with Joshua and um, with the, ABA therapy and the journey that we've we've undergone with uh, with him and um, you know learning about who he is and how we can make him um, make an environment for him to be successful. So we've kind of already started into the first question, which is tell us a little bit about your family. There's Mike, there's me, there's Joshua, of course. Um, he's our only child, and then we also have two cats, Max and Frosty. Right, and um, the. Uh, interesting thing is uh, with uh, working with Fox Valley Autism, the, the cats have kind of decided that the, the therapists are part of the family too, or, yeah. or, you know, they're humans as well. So um, that's actually saying something considering how shy Max is. <laughs> Max has always been shy. Okay, so the next question is, when did you start ABA therapy? Um, we actually started it after his diagnosis. He was diagnosed at three. We'll kind of go... Um, a little bit into the backstory about how he got diagnosed. It was actually kind of a long journey, but... Yeah, it was um, uh, 15 months. Right. Um, it, it really started um, at daycare um, when, he was, when he was two. And um, the, the daycare, um, the owner-operator started uh, telling us about things that she was seeing that she thought were concerns. Um, ways that he was behaving that um, were out of the ordinary for a child his age. Some of those were, you know, biting, hitting, things that typically at two years old they would have outgrown at that point. Mm -hmm. Other things that they were seeing is lack of socialization. So where he would not participate in group activities, he kind of kept more to himself. They also said there were periods where he wouldn't snuggle, like he wasn't a snuggler at all. Mm -hmm. which kind of leads us to one of the things that we noticed about him at that time was there was daycare Joshua and there was home Joshua. It's kind of like right. dual personalities at that point. Right, because he loved to snuggle with us and um, he, he was frequently coming home and um, singing the songs that they were obviously performing um, at, at daycare or he was... Um, you know, doing whatever dance steps, those sort of things. So, mm -hmm. so we knew he was he was listening. He just wasn't engaging at that point. But then he was comfortable engaging at home. And part of the reason why we think he wasn't engaging at that time, like at at daycare, was he was taking it in. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he was more just paying attention to what was going on. So one of the things, a couple of the things that we've done, they referred us to birth to three at that point, and we had him evaluated. Right. And one of the things birth to three said was uh, receptive language delay, which means he was hearing things, but he wasn't understanding what he was hearing. Right. Um, so, okay, we tried to work with that. You know, it, it didn't really help the behaviors, and what they were having us do with him really didn't seem to help him at all either. It was much more focused on um, just, I guess, physical inputs. Um, right. Things like brushing, having him do what they called heavy work, which was, you know, things like lifting heavy objects or pushing things. Um, but, really, the only thing that still continues today is the sensory input of squeezing. Right, right. But that's that's a piece of the puzzle as opposed to the whole thing. Right. So um, the, the other thing, though, is that um, we, we tried other avenues to explore. We, we had his hearing checked in as much as you can have a, a, a child that age have their hearing checked. Um, we, we actually did go to... Um, eventually a speech therapist. We also went to a psychologist right, and a mental health therapist too. Um, I believe the psychologist was June after he turned two. Mm -hmm. The speech therapist was in July. The mental health psychologist or the mental health therapist was in August. Right. And that was after a really severe bite to another child. Right. So, um, but what, uh, what we found is that um, the, the receptive language delay just didn't seem to apply to him. The speech therapist um, started going through the test and um, she thought we brought the wrong kid because he was he was doing a great job with yeah. um, both the receptive and expressive language. And typically to stop the test, you would need six questions wrong. He The most he got was four questions wrong. The reason they eventually did stop it, they were an hour into the test and they were... 
I think it was just that he wasn't paying attention anymore. You, which I'm sorry, at two, at that age, not yeah. quite three years old. He's two months shy of three. He's not going to pay attention for a long period of time. So right. to get him to focus for an hour was amazing. Right. Right. And they were in the five to six year old material at that point. Right. And um, you know, at that point, he was um, the speech therapist said that he was expressing himself in ways that were. Um, you know, advanced for his age, mm -hmm. um, you know, forming sentences and concepts um, that that clearly were beyond what um, you would expect for a child at that age. Yeah, the receptive language um, was also advanced too. Right. There was no delay there whatsoever. Right. So then he turned three, and a couple months after that, so, um, where I work, I was talking to the granddaughters of someone that I work with, and her son is autistic and she was talking to me about him and I realized how many things paralleled with Joshua. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, she kind of told me about her journey and where she got him tested. So I started calling around to different places because I'm like, you know what, let's just get him tested, get this over with so we know for sure. We kind of been tossing around the word autism for at least the previous year. Mm -hmm. um, me more so than anybody else because I kind of had an inkling when he was an infant. I think at one point... I don't remember who it was, but there was a professional who suggested that we wouldn't be able to get a diagnosis till he was actually that a couple years older. That was the psychologist. Older. Okay, and that was, she, what she did she said say? She said like eight or nine years old. Right, right, which seemed really, really a long time, all things considered, and that it, it, we were skeptical about that. Yeah. Um, ultimately, I think we discovered that we were right to be skeptical. Yeah. Um, and actually, what's interesting now is, when one thing I learned is that the earlier the diagnosis, like a year, two years old, the better outcomes you're going to have later on with the ABA therapy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so we managed to get him in. One of the struggles we did find trying to get him in to get tested was how long it takes to actually get the appointment. Because some places were, the appointments were three to four months out. Even with the school district for birth to five at that point, mm -hmm. um, the appointment was four months later. Right, but we were able to get him in earlier because um, Mindy called the place and actually talked quite a bit about you know our journey up at that point and the challenges we were having with him you know being physically aggressive and, and hurting other kids um, and all the and, other stuff we'd gone through right so they were actually able to get us in a lot quicker than usual yeah they got us in in two weeks so it was the end of December that year mm -hmm. so about mm -hmm. three he was three years three months at that point um right. you know and one of the things I even though I was anticipating the diagnosis it was so rough. I told Mike flat out, I'm like, I'm going to cry for a couple of days if we get this diagnosis. So even anticipating it didn't, you know, didn't mean it didn't affect me because it did. It affected both of us quite a bit. Right. Because your child goes from being normal and having a normal, you know, the rest of their life to, okay, now he's got this special need. Things change. Right. And I know I've talked to a lot of people since then who have adult children with autism and their kids have, they've worked with them to manage living a normal life. They've gone to college, they have a job. So it's not that he's never gonna live a normal life, it's just gonna be difficult. It's gonna be different, and he's just gonna need help to do it. Right, right, and I think one of the things that came out of the diagnosis uh, above everything else was, okay, you know what, now we know you know, what we need to do next. I think mm -hmm. that was one of our biggest challenges throughout this was, you know, we're trying all these different things, we're, we're taking all these different approaches, and um, we didn't feel like we had um, a real plan in place because we didn't feel like we had a real understanding of what was going on. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that that really made a huge difference for us. So, yeah. um, you know, within a couple of weeks um, after that, we had reached out to Fox Valley Autism Treatment and, um, you know, started to started to work on that plan, started to develop, um, you know, some actions that we could take and. Um, you know, begin at least some some initial um, therapy sessions, um, you know, starting with at daycare, but then also, you know, working with him at home. Yeah. So, and during this, this time also, we had, we knew that the daycare that he was at, he was not going to be able to stay at right. because they just, they didn't work well. One thing we've learned is daycares cater to the average child, Right. you know? average right whatever that means the thing is that we can't blame them for doing that because that's going to be the way that they're most successful the problem right. is that um you know in the case especially in the case of joshua they the his first daycare actually began to to treat him like he was the bad kid um you know one of the things that came out of out of um his initial therapy sessions was um that our, our lead therapist could tell that um the way the teachers were acting with him that 
you know, essentially they were putting him in a position to have a, a rough day or to, to not be successful. And they did treat him different, a mm -hmm. lot different than the other kids, which was hard on him because, you know, at, at that age, you don't, they don't understand. He's not quite three and a half. He doesn't understand what's going on. Right. Um, eventually it did get to a point where the daycare stated he can't stay there. They, they gave us a letter, a discharge letter for two weeks said, you know, and thankfully we had already initiated a daycare search for a new daycare for him. Mm -hmm. So we were lucky to find one and we were upfront with him and told him about his autism. And one of the first questions they asked us is, have you heard of Fox Valley Autism Therapy Program? Right. And we're like, yeah, we're actually working with them. So because FEA, we call it FEA, by the way, um, because FEA was still just getting off the ground at that time, they didn't really mesh with our first daycare very well. Right. Oh, you mean the therapy was just getting off Correct. the ground? Correct. Yeah. yeah, the therapy was yeah. just getting off the so, ground. Sorry. And I think that, um, you know, that being said, you know, the, the, the new daycare that we found said, oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you can have your therapist, the therapist come in, do sessions with them. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll work out great. Um, you know, we still found, I think it's, it's another one, it's like we said before, we still found that, um, you know, ultimately those daycares do try and cater to the, to the average child. And so, yeah. um, you know, he still did struggle, um, At in the new daycare. daycare. Yeah. Um, and I think the biggest challenge was that, um, you know, you didn't, you can't have a therapist with him the whole time. Right. right. So, so anytime he didn't have a therapist with him, he'd struggle. And I mean, we got to the point that we actually put together a care plan for him yes um you know the joke i always told was he's the only kid that came with an instruction manual <laughs> but um, uh yeah they, they, didn't, so... they didn't read it that's the problem they didn't read the instruction manual yeah because it talked about you know what to do if he has this what you can do if he has this behavior it gave like a few different redirection techniques um you know what if you can't get him to go to the bathroom and all different kinds of things in there it was what like four pages yeah it wasn't it wasn't a book it was no it was it a was... binder with a few sheets of paper in it yeah so that, right. you know, so that was one of our lessons, uh, you know, with, with daycares. So, so a year, he was at that daycare for about a year and a half mm -hmm. when they hit a point where they told us that Joshua would have to have a therapist with him one-on-one -on -one the whole time he was there. Right. So, um, we made the, the difficult decision to take him out of daycare completely. We, we actually hired in home help, um, which thankfully we're fortunate enough that we can, Hire can, the in-home in help. Yeah, so that and his his uh, his caregiver has been amazing. She's a former special ed teacher, mm -hmm. um, and I think I've seen more growth with Joshua since he's been at home, which has been it'll be a year August first. Right. Um, part of it actually now now he's in school. Um, you know, with the with the Appleton School District. Um, one of the things that he um, we're seeing is that that gap between school Joshua and home Joshua is, is shrinking. Yeah. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of, a lot of improvement in terms of those, those social pieces. Um, you know, he's, he's always been very intelligent. You know, we've talked a little bit about his, um, his communication skills, that, that, that receptive and expressive language. He's also very advanced in terms of his reading and, um, you know, his ability to, to communicate and form concepts. So, um, and his reading level between his reading, his math and his vocabulary skills, he's probably at about a second grade level right now and he's five. Right. And he'll be entering, um, kindergarten, kindergarten mm -hmm. in the fall. So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, um, I think it's, we've learned to, um, to really appreciate that, um, you know, despite the fact that he has these challenges that, you know, we're working through and, and that he's, um, that he's learning to, to adjust and, and, um, you know, I guess improve those, those social interactions. There's still so much that he does really well, right? Yeah. There's so many things that he, um, and he's, he's so polite and empathetic. Mm -hmm. with Absolutely. Like, I know there's been times where he's seen other kids that are very sad and he'll, you know, if it's like a group setting that he knows him, he'll go up and give him a hug and try to comfort them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's there's those things, there's qualities that we really appreciate and just are absolutely humbled mm -hmm. and amazed by him. One of the things that I think um, I think gives us a lot of hope is that knowing that he's intelligent and knowing that, um, you know, if we work with him, 
he will show improvement, right? Yep. If we if we find the right path and we really work with him, especially on a concept we might be struggling with, whether it was, you know, um, potty training or, um, you know, some of the things that we've talked about as far as, you know, social interactions, we've learned that if we just, if we really work with him, we really focus on those things, you know, his intelligence is going to make a difference there and he's he's going to improve. So yep. that's that really gives us a lot of hope for, for how well he's going to do in the future. And as far as those things that we focus on, we have really good communication with the therapist. I know we've got the Google Drive document where they document like on his days, on a day-to-day -day basis, how he did that day. Mm -hmm. And plus we always, um, we text back and forth with the lead therapist and the, the line therapist and you know let them know if there's something in particular we want them to work with and i think they've been absolutely amazing with him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think it's because of them that he's gotten as far as he has mm -hmm, absolutely and i think as parents one of the things that we've taken to heart and, and try to be responsible for is um as much as possible supporting those things so yep. you know if there's a particular technique that seems to be working with the therapists you know we're willing to adjust our um our approach to yep. to accommodate that you know I think we have a little bit of an advantage in that we only have one one child in that I mean the sense of, of being able to to work with him that way but um, I think you know the, the the takeaway there is you know I think we've we've given up trying to understand you know hey is this is this typical behavior for a kid yeah, his age? definitely given up on that we, we have no idea so we the, really don't look at the typical behavior or the milestones at this point really with right. him anymore all we can focus on is what's going to be best for him yep. what's going to work for him so you know and that's i think that's been hard, one of the hardest things for me to move away from is looking at okay what's typical for you know 15 months for 18 months for mm -hmm. three years for three and a half uh, you know, because that's, he's just never going to fall into those categories. There's things he's going to be advanced in and there's things he's going to be behind in. And that's, right. and I mean, that's just the way it is. That's typical too. You right. know, no kid falls directly on all those, but we've just learned to take Joshua for who he is. Right. And so. work with where he is. And I think that's one of the reasons why he's been able to get more advanced is because we don't look at what he should be doing for his age. We just look at what he can do and what he could be doing. Right, exactly. So, yeah, we don't worry about comparing him to other kids. That's, like I said, one of those hardest things to get away from. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Okay, so what have you learned about autism therapy or parenting that you feel other parents? Well, we kind of went through that. Mm -hmm. um, how do you cope with the stress? Oh. <laughs> you know what? Paul, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> don't say things like that on a video. Um, no, actually... Um, you know, there's always going to be stress. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that's, <laughs> frankly, the sooner you accept that, the better. And don't don't beat yourself up if you get upset with them. If you get angry, because there are times with Joshua where, yeah, we, I mean, he still knows what buttons to push. And it, we, it just, it'll set you off. You know, yeah, we yell on occasion. In those sense, in that sense, we treat him like a normal kid because there's still things that he can't, you can't let him get away with. He still gets disciplined. He still gets timeouts and things like that. Exactly. Has, has things taken away because he's, you know, he's not behaving or he's, you know, he's not listening. So. Yeah. When he's deciding to jump from the recliner to the couch. Right. Or do other, you know, things that are not safe. There's, there's <laughs> going to be consequences. Yeah. So, um, and I think that the other thing is, as far as stress, I think something that we've learned um, you know, there's the, the somewhat cliched phrase that it takes a village to raise a child. And I think this is one of those cases where you know, there's a realization that, you know, the reality is parents can't do it alone, even if you don't have an autism diagnosis. Yeah. Um, and I in really, this case, you really can't I, do it alone. I really wish more people would understand that, that, you know, it, because your kid has an autism um, diagnosis or, or struggles with things, that doesn't make you a bad parent, doesn't make you a failure. It just means that you need help. And, and you know, that and everybody needs help, frankly. It's taken us a while to understand that to to because you I mean, intellectually you can know that you're not a bad parent, but it doesn't help when your child is throwing that temper tantrum and screaming at you. Um, you know, and a lot of parents deal with this, like in the middle of the grocery store. Although to be honest, he's usually pretty good at the grocery store. I've had a couple of incidents, but uh, minor. But but they've been limited, thankfully. Yeah. But. So how do we cope? Well, a couple of things is we we take time for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you really have to do. You also have to talk to other parents. Right. And know what other parents are going through and let them give you advice on how to cope. 
and right. how to get through some of the day-to-day -day experiences that you're going to have. Right. But that being said, you know, also find what works best for you, right? Yep. Um, I've probably taken more advice in from other parents than I can even imagine. But <laughs> what I and, and that's not even just autistic children. That's well, just true. parenting in it's general. True. So if there's anything I've learned, it's find what works for you and stick with that. And, you know, if your kid is healthy and happy and seems to be getting better every day, then you know what? That's, that's fine. You yep. don't everything else becomes irrelevant after that and take your downtime whenever you can yeah if, if you can take your away from the kid time when you right. can absolutely anything else that um that we need to cover i feel like we have talked a little bit about that last question about celebrating our child yeah um, with his intelligence and his caring and with his caring because i think it helps that we have two cats he is very very caring for animals mm-hmm um, he actually got to ride a horse for the first time in Texas a couple of weeks ago, and he was very good with the horse. I mean, he was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's another thing to remember is, is, yeah, Joshua has an autism diagnosis, but he still has the opportunity to do so many fun things as a kid, yep. and we still have the opportunity to... Um, be a part of those things and, and, and he is take still those a, memories with us. That's the thing to remember. He is still a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, allow him to ride his bike, his scooter, you know, go to the park, go swimming. Mm -hmm. he, you know, experience those things that kids can experience. Because, I mean, yes, there are some, some ways that we have to um, alter things, like making sure he's got his headphones when it's going to be noisy. Right. You know, so that way those sensory things don't bother him and he can enjoy the experience. Absolutely. But they just need that chance to be kids. Absolutely. So, so we hope this is helpful. Yes. And, um, you and know. If, if FEA, you know, decides that they, you know, want to offer up people to talk to, I would say that I'd be willing to talk. Absolutely. If we you do. ever want to just have coffee, absolutely call you know yeah we'd, we'd be happy to uh to provide that support we've we've had a long journey and there's obviously still many more years to come but yes <laughs> um you know i feel like we're in a much better spot now that he's you know going on six than we were when he was you know three years old so. and still figuring out what was going on with him absolutely so all right well thank you thank you i am casey schrader a uh, single mom of three. I have an 11 year old daughter, a seven year old son, and a four year old son. Now, we started ABA therapy in home through Fox Valley Autism two and a half years ago. And since then, um, I've seen tremendous growth in my four year old. At birth, he had a stroke, which caused him um, to have epilepsy, autism, CP, and a blood clotting disorder. Throughout that time, it was a struggle with everything. Um, and if I didn't have Fox Valley Autism there helping through everything, I don't think he would be half the kid he is today. The struggles of the meltdowns, they're heartbreaking as a mom to watch. But seeing that they're happening and seeing that they are less than what they used to be, that's how I know that therapy is working. He used to bite, he used to bang his head on the ground, he used to hit because he didn't know how to express himself. Um, now, two and a half years later, he's saying four to five word sentences. He's able to express most of the time on how he's feeling um, and myself, having them come into the house has helped me become a better parent and seeing the things that they do and learning from the things that they do helps me realize, okay, this isn't like an attack on my kid. This is more of a strength and growth that he has to go through. It's no different than when you start a job, you have to learn things. It's setting him up for the future to help him. And when I see him having a meltdown, I go and I have meltdowns myself. It's hard watching. Um, but when you sit there and you watch the therapist push him to express how he's feeling, 
it makes you know, okay, he's gonna be okay when he gets older to be able to express himself. Um, now when he has those meltdowns, sometimes I do end up walking away, I have to. Because if I don't, not only is it hurting me, but it's making things difficult for him because it either becomes attention seeking or you know he just wants somebody else to talk to him rather than the therapist trying to help him. If I stick around when he escalates to a point of, I call it no return, it will end up becoming where he becomes violent. And um, he, he melts my heart watching him grow. But when, when the meltdowns start, I either go and I hide in my car, I cry, um, I go upstairs and I read a book, take a shower, a long shower to kind of just forget what's going on and I let the therapist kind of do what they need to do. In the beginning, it was hard. When he first started therapy and I started watching the meltdowns, it was hard. I looked at him like they were crazy, like, what are you doing? But the more I watched, the more I realized, hey, they're helping him. Pushing him past his limits, it's no different than pushing somebody, an adult, past their limits to lose weight or, you know, become, I don't know, social. If I didn't... If I didn't think that ABA, ABA therapy would work, I wouldn't be still in it two and a half years later. So all the new parents out there that are just starting an ABA or just learning about it, just know that throughout the struggles, as a parent, a single mom of many kids or a parent as, that has multiple kids on the spectrum, just know that they are doing their jobs and they are doing it with passion, love, not only for your child or children, but for you. And they're not just there for the kids. They are here to help you as a parent mentally get through everything. They are here to help you push through all the ups and downs. I know. <laughs> it's okay. You can explain. Explain that you're, you're having blinds put in. <laughs> yeah. I'm having blinds put in right now. So, um, do you have any, is there any more questions that, I guess the good one is any advice that you'd give or what you wish you would have known, um, when you were new? Um, just know that when they start the therapy, you may see your child regress in the beginning, but that's because they are being pushed to succeed. When I first started with the therapy, with having them come in, I didn't, didn't think it was gonna be tough. I thought, oh, they're just gonna come in and they're gonna help him and help me help him. But it was hard to watch. And there were days I felt bad for the staff because the meltdowns were insane. The biting, the hitting, throwing things at them. I would apologize and they would be like, it's okay, we already know. And we are here to help get past that. So for parents that have never even known about ABA or anything like that. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. I feel as if I went from being a mom who felt I was failing to being a strong mom, a mom that throughout the meltdowns I can still push through. 
When I go out in public now, it's completely different. I used to go to Walmart with him and he would have a meltdown and I would just leave. Um, or I'd give him what he wanted. Now it's like, I go somewhere and he starts having a meltdown. I let him sit there. I'll pretend I'm still shopping in whatever area we're in. And I'll tell him if he can't stop, then I guess we're just gonna have to stand here until you can learn to calm your body down. So, and it's helped a lot. I don't walk out, I don't sit and worry about looks from other people anymore. So not only is ABA therapy helping him, but it's helping me a lot and my other kids. <laughs> my seven year old tries to join in on therapy all the time and pretends that he's like, all right, this is what we're doing. And you know, tries to help tremendously. My 11 year old, she's a, a mini mom. And she's always like, okay, what do we need to do now? And just constantly helping. So it's helped the entire family. That's great. Is there any more questions on there? Um, so there's a question in here that says, what are some things you really celebrate regarding yeah. your child and autism? I celebrate the gains when he finally is able to be potty trained. That was the, we struggled so long with that. And all of a sudden it was just like something clicked. We just changed one thing and it clicked. Um, so we, I don't know, we, we do things like we do outings. We did the walk for autism. Um, we make sure that we wear a button, we have buttons we wear when we go out, um, t-shirts. Like, we wanna show the world that having autism, it's not what people believe it is. It's a different ability, not a disability. The mm -hmm. amount of compassion these people have, it shows. And they are the reason why I sit here and I'm so strong with it. And in promoting autism, per se, they are the reason I am so strong with it. At first I was just like, oh, I'm not gonna let people know that my son has autism. And now it's like, you know what? Judge me if you want, but you know what? This is my life and this is where I sit as a mom knowing that I'm doing the right thing. And I am okay as a mom. Because believe me, I still have days where I feel I'm not good as a mom. But the staff always picks me back up. Tells me, if you weren't a good mom, you wouldn't have done A, B, and C. You wouldn't be where you are today. So, just keep your head up and keep an open mind throughout therapy when you first start it. Because if you don't, you're gonna look at it as torture. You're gonna look at it as the therapists aren't doing their job right, that kind of thing, but it's not, it's far from that. It's far from that. My son is potty trained, he talks, walks. He tells us how he's feeling based on colors. He's learning his colors his ABCs, one, two, threes. And it's weird because every time he does his flashcards for his ABCs and one, two, threes, and they mix them up, they lay them out and be like, okay, what's this? And he can tell you the difference between an R and a two. And he can tell you what they are. And as a four-year-old, that's huge. My other kids, I don't think, could do that. <laughs> so that's a, that's a big thing. Just... I, I don't know what else to say, but I, I just, I know that they have made me stronger and made him stronger.